So I've got an old PlayStation 2 Slim here that I've done some modifications on. And the first one is I've got HDMI video out the back. So it's already plugged in. Let's go ahead and hit the power button, turn it on. And right there in the front vents, you'll see some blue LED lights come on whenever it starts to turn up. Lights. And the splash screen. Uh, RetroPie Entertainment. So I've gutted this old PlayStation that wasn't working, uh, put a Raspberry Pi inside of it, and set it up with RetroPie. So I've already got some games. And both of the controller ports in the front, as well as the USB ports work. I've got a keyboard dongle in there right now, I was using to work on it. And a PlayStation 2 third party wireless controller. So let's see if we can navigate over to the PlayStation and uh, we'll do some Crash Bash. Uh, if you can hear that, the original fan from the PlayStation is still installed on there and whenever the processor gets too hot, the fan turns on and starts to uh, starts to cool it down. It cools it down pretty good. There we go. Booting up. Uh, so I'm sure everyone's already seen RetroPie. So it's just a demonstration so when it's starting. That works. Uh, the power button there in the front works. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off and we'll uh, open it up and check out the insides. Just hold down the power button. LEDs are flashing stops and it goes through a shutdown sequence all right let's go ahead and open it up all right so i've got the pi station 2 all opened up uh, we'll start here at the left this is the top part of the case these are just the blue leds uh, controlled by the raspberry pi using the gpio pins at the front like i said earlier both of the controller ports work all right now i've got the wireless dongle for the wireless controller still set up in there uh, and the two USB ports, both of them work as well with my uh, mouse and keyboard uh, dongle already plugged in. And then the original PlayStation power button, this also works. We saw me turn it on as well as turn it off earlier. It also reboots, so if you hold down the power button for about two seconds, it'll go into shutdown. If you just tap it, it'll restart it. And then power, and then hitting again, it'll turn it back on. So right above that, uh, this little, looks like a triangle thing. That is the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller to USB adapter. So that's plugged right into the back of the Raspberry Pi. As well as, you can see the other, all the ports are used. Uh, two USB ports in the front. The PlayStation to USB adapter. As well as a 256 gigabyte um, flash drive. So internal storage, uh, the Raspberry Pi is set to use this for all of its storage and everything. Uh, right above the adapter was the original PlayStation 2 fan. I wanted to use as much as original parts as I could and I've got this pointed to blow directly on the heatsink on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, finally next to that is the DC to DC buck converter because the original PlayStation 2 slim brick does 8.5 volts instead of 5, which is what the Raspberry Pi needs. So this just bucks it down to 5 volts. And then out the back, um, all of the original connectors from the PlayStation 2 are there and they're all working except for the optical output because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have optical. So uh, from the left there, power and then the audio video output, optical and then Ethernet. Uh, is connected to the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi and then added HDMI. So the composite also works on this. I've got a little crappy 3.5 inch composite LCD. Go ahead and turn it on and you can see that it's working. And of course because it's composite it looks like crap. Oh. Uh, but if I can just hold down the power button and it'll start to turn it off. 
All right, shut down. So that is everything on the Pi Station 2. Thanks for watching.